Today I want to go back to something we talked about in a previous video. But let's first look at what we want to achieve. In life, you can be whoever you want to be. You can be a Jedi. Or you can dream you're a Jedi. Or you can be a happy wife. Or you can be a queen like me. Or maybe a queen of the dance floor. Or you can be like me and just comfy and chill. So Latent Sync version 1.5 was actually released a little while ago, but it kind of flew under the radar. A lot of people missed it because everyone was focused on Wen and Hanyuan's video models. But today, we're going to take a closer look. And on top of that, I've got a better, more efficient way to mat and isolate characters. If you remember the last method, it worked, but let's be honest, it took up way too much time. Every single frame had to be processed one by one, which wasn't ideal. So here's the workflow for today's video. But first, if you want to learn how to actually use AI productively in Comfy UI, make sure to like and subscribe. All right, I believe this is version two of the character isolation and lip sync workflow. The main updates here are the new latent sync 1.5 node and the matte anyone node. And this one is special because unlike before, it only needs one frame to remove the background from an entire video. That's a huge improvement and here's how it works. First, you upload your video. As soon as you do that, it gets passed through the resize image node. Then, it goes through the image batch to image list node, and from there, it moves through the segment RMBG node. Now this is where things start to change. Instead of removing the background from every frame in the entire video, it only removes the background from one frame and creates a mask based on that. And that alone speeds up the entire workflow considerably. That single frame is then passed to the Matt Anyone node as a reference. And basically, what we're telling it is, everything that isn't white, remove it. If you already have your own mask and want to use that instead, you can. Just use an upload image node, upload your mask, and then, instead of using the image output, connect the mask output to the Matt Anyone node but for now, I'm just going to use the segment background remover because it's easier. Once the whole video is processed, you'll end up with exactly what you wanted. One version of the video with the background removed and another version with just the mask. Next up, we've got the new latent sync node. And this is probably only the third time an update has let me down, but for the wrong reason. The latent sync node is great, like genuinely impressive. But for some reason, you need more than 8 gigabytes of VRAM to get it running properly. When I said 12 gigabytes was the new entry level, people thought I was crazy. But fast forward a few years, and here we are. When I first tried running it, I kept getting an out-of-memory error. I thought, okay, maybe I just need a little more headroom. So I switched to a 12 gig graphics card. And guess what? That only gave me a few seconds of audio before it crashed. That's when I found out the requirements for this version is 20 gigabytes of VRAM, at least for now, because there isn't a quantized model yet. The errors were so bad at first that I decided I should start this video with the installation steps. So please watch the installation steps first before you do anything. If you don't set this up correctly, it can completely break your comfy UI install. So this is what happened to me. I immediately got hit with an error on first run. It said if if mpeg python is not greater than or equal to zero. So I had to go into the custom nodes and tweak the conditioning. Basically, I just removed the conditioning so that it only checks if f if mpeg python is installed. And finally, it started downloading the model on the second run. This took forever. The base model is five gigs and the second model is nearly two gigs. After waiting for what seemed like an eternity, I came back and ran it a third time and got hit with out of memory error. I closed every app background process and still out of memory. So I gave up and rented a GPU. Let's start with the installation. First, you need to uninstall the old latent sync node. And this part is really important. Make sure there is no comfy UI latent sync folder left in your custom nodes directory. You might be wondering, why does this matter so much? Well, it's because of the model naming scheme. The old latent sync model and the new one both have the exact same name and both live in the checkpoints folder. So if you don't fully remove the old version first, it's just not going to work. You'll hit your first error right there. Now, as for the other errors, the developer actually fixed them. And I can't tell you how happy that made me. I had to delete 15 minutes of footage where I was just rambling about how to fix this node. So seriously, 
Thank you, Mr. Ronan. And because everything is finally back to normal, installing this is way easier now. Open the manager in Comfy UI, go to Custom Node Manager, and search for Comfy UI Latent Sync Wrapper. That's the one by Shamuel Ronan. Then search for Comfy UI Matt Anyone Kytra. This one's by Kytra Script. Once both of those are installed, restart Comfy UI. Next, click the link in the description below. That'll take you to the hugging face space where the models are hosted. You can let the node download these models automatically if your internet is fast and stable enough. As for the rest of us poor folk with slow internet, it's better to download them manually. For that, here's what you need to grab. The latent sync unet model, the stable sync net model, and the config.json file. Once those are downloaded, go to your Comfy UI folder. From there, navigate to custom nodes, then into Comfy UI latent sync wrapper, and inside that, open the checkpoints folder. That's where these three files go. Drop them in there. Next, you need to download the tiny.pt model. This one needs to go inside a new folder that we're going to create inside the checkpoints folder. Name the new folder Whisper and put the tiny.pt model inside it. And one more thing, you also need to create another empty folder inside the checkpoints folder. Name this one Auxiliary. That's it for file setup. Now, go ahead and download the workflow file. Once you've got it, just drag it onto the Comfy UI workspace. If you see any missing nodes pop up, don't worry. Just go back to the manager, select Install Missing Nodes, check all the missing ones, and install them. Restart Comfy UI one more time, and you're done. But before we move on, let's do a quick check to make sure all the files are in the right places. Inside Comfy UI Latent Sync Wrapper checkpoints, you should have Latent Sync UNet, Stable Sync Net, and the config.json file. You should also have two extra folders, Whisper, which contains tiny.pt, and the auxiliary folder, which should be empty. If all of that looks good, then you only need ffmpeg. That's only if you haven't got it on your system. Click the link in the description below, and it'll take you to the ffmpeg website. Once you're there, choose your operating system. Mine is Windows, so that's what I'll select. Now, you'll see two download links. Either one works, but I'll click the first one, which takes me to another page. Here you'll see two versions, Essential and Full. I usually go with the full version, just to be safe. Once it's downloaded, extract the folder and rename it to FFmpeg. Copy the entire folder and paste it into your C drive. Next, we need to add it to the system path. Click the Start menu, search for Environment Variables, and open Edit the System Environment Variables. In the window that pops up, click on Environment Variables, then select Path, and click Edit. A new window will open. Go to your C drive, open the FFmpeg folder, right-click on the bin folder. Scroll down until you see Copy as Path, and click it. Go back to the Environment Variables window, click New, and paste the path you just copied into the field at the bottom. Before saving, remove the quotation marks at the beginning and end of the path. Then click OK, and then OK again, and that's it. You now have FFM PEG set up on your system. At this point, everything should be working perfectly. Now let's get back to the workflow. In this version, you only need to upload one source video, not two like before. That's one big change from the previous version. For this example, I'm using a video of a man and a woman sitting next to each other. To separate them, I'm adding woman with an afro to the background remove node, which will segment the woman from the scene. Now, one thing you have to make sure of, all your videos need to be forced to 25 frames per second. Latent Sync does not do well with anything else. If your video is, say, 30 or 60 FPS, you're going to run into issues. Another thing to keep in mind, the composite node only works with images that have dimensions divisible by 64. If you upload a video where the width or height isn't a multiple of 64, you'll get an error. What I do in that situation is change the image resize interpolation setting to stretch. That forces the video into the right dimensions without breaking anything. So here's what happens next. The background remover only removes the background from one frame of the video. That single frame's mask then gets sent to the Matt Anything node. And here's where the magic happens. 
Matt Anything takes that one mask as a reference and perfectly removes the background from the entire video. Now, how well this works depends on how good that one frame was segmented. If the background remover leaves anything behind in that one frame, it's going to show up in the entire final mat. So take a second to make sure it's clean. At this point, the video with just the woman, background completely removed, gets sent to the latent sync node. And one thing I forgot to mention, you need to upload the audio to the load audio node before you run the workflow. That has to be ready to go beforehand. Also, the audio and video have to be the same length. I usually just use a video editing tool to match them up before bringing them in. It saves you a lot of hassle later. All right, let me just show you what I did. First, I imported the video clips and audio into CapCut. Then I arranged them so that each clip is at least three seconds or less with the audio sitting on the track right below the videos. From there, I exported the clips, but only the video clips by selecting them, right clicking and choosing export clips. That way, each clip gets exported individually without any audio attached. Next, I turned each clip and its corresponding audio into a compound clip. And the reason I did this is simple. I needed the audio and video to be exactly the same length, with the audio starting exactly where I want it to start. Once I had those compound clips, I selected all of them and exported them again. This time, just for the audio, I know this might seem like an extra step, maybe even a little tedious, but trust me, it's going to make sense in a second. After that, I closed CapCut and opened UVR to separate the vocals from the videos. I saved those isolated vocal tracks in the same folder where I had put the video clips I exported earlier, the ones without any audio. So now, I've got audio tracks that are the same length as the video clips, and each one starts exactly where I need it to. Even if there are moments in a clip where the audio is supposed to be completely silent at the beginning. With that all set up, let's get back to the workflow. The latent sync node is what adds the audio to the video and creates the lip movement. And here's where things get interesting. Right now, I've only been able to get about three seconds of synced audio, which compared to the last version of latent sync is a huge downgrade. The previous version gave me much longer lip sync really fast. I think it has to do with the size of this new model. But honestly, I'll take what I can get at least until they release an FP8 version that hopefully speeds things up again. After that, the video moves to the composite node, where it merges the background free video with the main video. The mask is used to remove 99.9% .9 of the green background, which is great, but that last 0.1% always seems to sneak through. To fix that, I added a grow mask node, but instead of growing the mask, I actually shrunk it by minus eight. That tiny tweak removes any green edges that bled through. You can adjust that value depending on how much green spill you're dealing with. I don't know why I didn't think of this in my first workflow. This is exactly why I love Comfy UI. Sometimes the most unexpected nodes end up being the perfect solution. Well, when they actually work, anyway. So the composite node pushes everything to the video combined node. And this here is why this update doesn't feel like an update. The lip movement is not as pronounced as I hoped. Or you can be a happy wife. Or you can be a happy wife. Or you can be a happy wife. Even when I increase the steps, I'm going to have to check that out later. But for now, let's test something else. What if I reload the image? I know I'll lose the audio, but what if I take the audio from the main load video node and combine it with the final video using an audio concatenate node. This time, I'll enter the following into the background remove node, man with white hoodie. And I'll also choose a male voice. In life, you can be whoever you want to be. The theory here is that both sounds should come through at the end. All right, it's running through latent sync now, and it failed. The sample rates of the two audio tracks don't match. Let me try something else. I'm going to add the audio stack node from the MTB nodes package and run it again. In or life, you can, be, a you can be whoever you want to be. In or life, you can be, a happy you can be whoever you want to be. This seems to be way better. Both the old and new audio can be heard clearly. And by the way, MTB's package comes with 60 nodes. 
And just this one little tweak lets you reuse the same video over and over again. So if you've got multiple characters in a video and you want them to have a back and forth conversation, this makes it so much easier. All right, so this is the new latent sync node paired with the mat anything node. This new update is not what I expected. It's not really an improvement in the way I was hoping for. The biggest change, system requirements. I cannot get this thing to run on eight gigs of VRAM anymore, but 12 gigs works just fine, sometimes. Oh, and then there's the FFM peg error I ran into, which was an experience, but kudos to the dev for sorting that out. And look, at the end of the day, it's free. The dev doesn't owe anyone a comfy UI wrapper, but he still made one. And for that, I genuinely appreciate him. People think creating nodes for comfy UI is a walk in the park, but it really isn't. Maybe if your name is Kajay, then sure, but for the rest of us mere mortals, it's a process. You have to create the wrapper, test it on Windows, Linux, and if you're truly unhinged, Apple, and then you have to maintain it. Every single time Comfy Anonymous decides to push an update, you have to update your node too. So, seriously, thank you. As long as it's free and open source, and it's not a virus, then you're good in my books. I also want to check out more nodes. I know there are some obscure Comfy UI nodes hidden away in the manager, Tell me what you guys want me to test, and who knows? We might even put together a leaderboard of the most productive, or just straight up practical nodes out there. Oh, and before I forget, check out sneakerrobot.org. I'm planning to drop new workflows there in the future, especially if they're NSFW. Thanks for being here. Like, subscribe, and hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.